Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this satisfying rigid body animation using a variety of tricks that I've never talked about on this channel. You've probably seen simulations like this before on Instagram and other social media and I've always wondered how I can recreate this and today I've finally figured it out. So go ahead and open up a brand new scene in Blender and let's get started. First let's go ahead and delete the default cube and then I'm going to press shift A and add in a mesh and then a UV sphere. Now you can use any collection of objects that you want, I'm just going to be using a UV sphere for this tutorial, but you can see in this animation I used a variety of different random objects uh, for this effect. Now with this UV sphere I'm going to hit control 2 to add in a subdivision surface modifier and then right click and shade it smooth. Then we're going to jump over to the physics tab and then enable rigid body. Now at the moment, if we play our animation, you're gonna see it just falls straight down. So let's fix that by turning off gravity. Over in the scene panel, we're gonna open up the rigid body world. Underneath the field weights option here, turn gravity all the way down to zero. The other thing that I want to add is a couple of force field to drag the objects together as the animation is playing. So we're gonna press shift A, go over to force field, and then add in a force field object. Over in the physics tab, set this value of the strength to a negative value. This will bring all of the uh, rigid bodies together. So set that to negative 250. Then the other thing I wanna do is just shift D this, switch it over to the turbulence method right here. And then the strength, I'm just gonna go down to around 50 or so. And then the size, let's go up to 0.2. And this will just give the uh, overall animation a bit more randomness. So the next step in this tutorial is we're going to be animating a couple of these settings over here on the right side and then we're going to duplicate the object and then offset all of those keyframes and that'll give the effect of the objects popping up as the animation is playing. So first off we're going to set the mass right here down a bit. Let's go with 0.3. This will allow the force field to pull it in a bit faster and then we're going to turn off dynamic. The dynamic checkbox here allows the object to participate or not participate in the simulation. It will still have collision, but it's not gonna react to gravity or anything like hitting it and bouncing it off to the side. It'll just remain static. It's basically if we set this over to passive. Now, the reason we're not using passive though is because we're gonna be animating this dynamic. I want this to turn back on at a certain point in the timeline. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna jump to frame 10. We're gonna add in a keyframe to the dynamic. And the other thing that we're gonna do is bring up the collections option here. We're gonna be animating the collections tab as well. The reason we're doing this is because I don't want the objects to have collision until they appear in the simulation. So for all the objects that haven't appeared in the simulation, we're gonna be setting them to collection two. So switch it over to collection two, and then on frame 10, we're gonna add in a keyframe to collection two. Then we're gonna to jump to frame 11, bring it to collection one, and then add in another keyframe, and then we're gonna turn on dynamic right here in the rigid body. The other thing that we can do, if you're using a UV sphere like I am, we can switch this over to sphere, and this will just help the simulation uh, be a bit faster when baking and when simulating. However, if you have other complex objects, you may wanna leave it on convex hull. So now when we play the animation, it's gonna be turned off until frame 10, and then this object will turn itself on, go to collection one, and then it'll start interacting with the rest of the objects. The other thing that I wanna do is at the end of the animation, I want all the objects to stop interacting and start to disappear. So let's just jump, let's set the end frame to like 500 or so. We will be changing this later in this video, but I just wanna make sure when we offset the keyframes that they don't override each other in the timeline. So I'm just gonna go really far away, like frame 440. We're gonna turn off dynamic, add in a keyframe, and then go to the second collection and then add in a keyframe again. Finally, one more thing that we're gonna do is we're going to toggle the render icon in the outliner. It's gonna be turned off on frame 10, add in a keyframe, go to the next frame, frame 11, turn it back on and then add in a keyframe. And then at the very end on frame, uh, 440 right here. We're gonna turn it off and then add in a final keyframe. There we go. We have all the animation data in place and now we can start duplicating this object and then offsetting the keyframes. What I'll do is I'll just restart the timeline and hit Shift D on this object and then I'll select both of them and I want around 50 uh, UV spheres. So I'm just gonna duplicate it until we get up to around 50 UV spheres. 
the other thing that I want to do is randomize the scale on all of these objects. So make sure they're all selected. And then if you press F3, you can type in the word randomize and then we can select randomize transform. If we open up this value now, make sure scale even is turned on and let's just set the scale down to like 0.2 or so like that. And now they should have a bunch of random scale all throughout our different objects. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and now scale everything back down to its original size, something like that, and then hit control A and then apply the scale. If we play our animation right now, you're going to see that all of the objects shoot so far out in our simulation. Now, the reason this is happening is because they're all inside each other and the collision inside each other just forces them to shoot outwards when they uh, have physics on frame 10. There's a way that we can fix this though. If we jump over to the scene panel underneath the rigid body world, we can turn on split impulse. Split impulse basically stops the objects from flying out really, really far. Uh, if they are inside each other, which is which is the exactly what's happening in this case So now if we play our animation we can see this effect and this is exactly what we want That looks pretty good. Now the next step is just to offset all the animation We can do this very easily by en enabling an add-on that I've used previously in other tutorials We can open up the preferences right here underneath the extensions You can type in the word commotion and you should see the commotion add-on right here Go ahead and install that. Once that installs, you can press N to open up the properties tab and then go over to the commotion tab right here. This will allow us to offset all the keyframes with one click of a button. If you take a look at the animation one more time, you're going to see the start of the animation, two UV spheres pop out, and then it waits a little bit, and then another one, and then another one, and it slowly speeds up over time. To create that exact effect, we're going to set the offset up high till around five or so and then make sure we sort by random instead of name, and then just click on offset animation. Then all we have to do is just select the uh, first two keyframes. We're gonna bring them together. These are the first two UV spheres, so we'll drag them pretty close together, something like this. Then we're gonna select all the other keyframes, these keyframes here. Let's go with around 30 frames. So the third UV sphere is gonna pop out on frame 40. Next, I'm gonna want probably around 15 frames, so we'll cut that in half. We'll go over to 55. And then finally, the last one, maybe we can go with like 10 frames. So we'll drag all these ones to 65. And then for the rest of them, uh, they can be pretty quick. So what we can do now is move our cursor over to that 65. And then instead of offsetting by five here, let's go down till around uh, one. And then we'll click on offset animation. Oh, actually control Z that make sure you turn on selected only. So only the selected keyframes are offset, but the other keyframes here that we've placed manually remain in their positions. So make sure selected is on, is on and then click on offset animation. Save your project and let's check the timing on this. So we can see that happens, then it pops out and then they slowly pop out a lot more. And that is looking pretty good. Next, we're gonna jump to the end right here, we can determine how long we want this initial pop out to be. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So let's jump over to frame like 150. We're gonna drag these keyframes back over, right there. And instead of offsetting by random, I'm actually gonna be offsetting it by our cursor. Now we wanna make sure our cursor is at the very center of this giant pile of UV spheres. So now if we were to offset this, the objects inside here, the ones that are closest to the UV sphere, will slowly start disappearing and moving to the second collection. And that'll allow the other objects around here to slowly kind of come in together towards the center, which gives a cool effect. So on frame 150, we're gonna click on offset. And again, make sure selected only is checked, offset animation. And now let's see what this looks like now. And there we go, that looks pretty good. If you think it's moving a bit too fast as they're disappearing, you could bring up the offset to like two and offset it again, and that will allow it to last a bit longer, which might look a bit better. Yeah, I think that looks a bit better, and then it'll be about a 10 second animation. So we'll set here the animation end to around 10 seconds. Our animation is now done, so let's work on the rest of the scene, like the lighting and materials. 
We're gonna select the lamp here. We'll drag it over to the left side. We'll press Z and go into the rendered view, maybe drag it down a bit and set the power a bit higher. Let's go with like 2000. And then the size will drag up a bit to be a bit softer. Something like that will look pretty good. Over in the world settings, I'm gonna add an environment texture here. Click on open. And if you wanna use the same one I'm using, I'll put the link in the description. I found that like a, a photo studio, I think looks pretty good. That'll give a, a lot of really nice uh, reflections. And then the other thing I wanna do is turn it off in the world settings. So we're gonna jump over to the film, turn on transparency. We're also gonna open up the color management here, set the look to high contrast to give us some sharper colors. We're also going to enable motion blur, bring the shutter amount a bit higher to give us some nice motion blur as the UV spheres are popping out. And then for the steps, let's go up to 16. I'm gonna also enable ray tracing. And now for the material for these, we'll select one of them. We'll come up here to the top and split this view, or you could just go to the shading editor. I prefer this method, so I have a vertical window. We'll create a new material. And the way we're gonna have random colors all throughout our objects is by hitting Shift A, going to input, and then adding in a object info node right here. We have a random option here, and if we plug this into a converter color ramp, we can then we'll plug that into the base color. Uh, let's make sure that all of these objects share that same material. So box select all of them, control L, and then select link materials. So now if we go into the render view, all of them are sharing that material, and we can see they have a bunch of random shades of uh, black and white. At this point, you can select one of them and change the color however you like. I think I'm gonna go with a nice blue. And then for the white handle, I'm gonna go with an orange color. Something like this will look pretty good. And the other thing I'm gonna do is change it from linear to constant. And if we drag the orange handle closer, that'll give us some nice color changes like that. Over in the principled shader, we're gonna bring the roughness down to around 0.1. That's gonna give us a nice glossy finish. So now if we restart and play it, here is the effect that we get. Now you can play around with this color ramp. If you wanted to like have more orange, you could drag this a bit closer, something like that. And that is looking pretty neat. Now, finally, before this tutorial ends, let's go into the front view and hit control alt numpad zero to snap the camera to place. We'll select it, drag it back a bit and place it how we want our uh, simulation to be. The other thing that you're gonna want to do before you render is jump over to the scene panel and then just bake in the uh, rigid body world. If your animation is lasting longer than 250, make sure you set that here and then click on bake. Now the render should work properly and the motion blur should work correct. We'll jump to a random frame like 70, 79 and see what the motion blur looks like by hitting F12. That's looking pretty good. If we wanna add in a background to the transparent background, we'll jump over to the compositing workspace and select use nodes. We'll drag this down a bit. And all we need to do is press Shift A, go over to Color, Mix, and then add in an Alpha Over node. If we then take the image and plug that into the bottom input, this first image now controls the background of your render. So we'll drag that down to be more of a gray color. I think that looks pretty good. Then at this point, all you have to do is just set an output and then render out your animation. But there we go. That is how you create this cool rigid body effect in Blender. If you want to grab this blend file and the other animations I've created using this effect, you can find my Patreon linked in the description. If you have other tutorials you would like to see in the future, let me know in the comments down below. And make sure to subscribe because we're actually pretty close to reaching 200,000 subscribers. Thank you all for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.